as the universe emerged by various theories, no light could escape the dense opaque fog and everything was dark. But as the soup of atomic particles began to cool down, monoatomic as well as eventually diatomic gases began to form, like hydrogen helium, leading to universe's first bright and vigorous stars fighting through the fog that once blocked all light from escaping the stretching universe. It was still a few hundred million years after that that the first source of light was formed, making photons traveling through the unhindered space for about 13.5 billion years to finally hit the man-made detectors of James Webb Space Telescope. Just because of the immense enthusiasm of the humans, the space odyssey finally comes to an end. This telescope is going to give us a view at the early universe from which everything we see now has been born. This $10 billion endeavor of NASA has been launched on the early hours of 24th December last year in the European heavy lift Arian 5 rocket from the spaceport in Kourou, French Guyana. The insane engineering of James Webb Space Telescope is the next generation of human curiosity. The launch vehicle, the image processing, the electrochemical systems, cooling systems, the mirror shun shield of the James Webb Space Telescope is the culmination of centuries of research of not just NASA but all over the world. The launch will take place from the ideally located spaceport over the equator to give the James Webb Space Telescope an extra edge towards its final destination, which will not be revolving around the Earth, but will be situated at 1.5 million kilometers away at Lagrange Point 2. Lagrange points are unique points in space where small objects like satellite can more or less stay stationary due to its relative gravitational pull among the bodies. As in the image, there are five Lagrange points between Earth and Sun. Thanks to Lagrange points' speciality, it will stay away from Sun. Thus, infrared telescope can work efficiently, facing its back towards the Earth, Sun and the Moon. For the correct working of the telescope, the dark side should operate at minus 233 degrees Celsius, which makes the sun shield extremely important. To prevent heat transfer of the sun, which is mainly through process of conduction and radiation, sun shields needs to be light, strong, resistant to degradation from solar radiation, reflective and dimensionally stable. Captain, a type of plastic, is coated with aluminium and silicon to make the sun shield with five layers of these with thickness of around 0.05 mm the sun shields has many special features and complicated deployment system to reduce heat transfer and reflect away the radiation the probability of micrometeorites to hit the sun shield is quite high which can tear the sun shield to prevent this rip stops have been molded in the sun shield to arrest the tears. The parts of the telescope, specifically the mid-infrared detection instrument located inside needs to be around 7 Kelvin, just 7 degrees above the absolute zero Kelvin required active cooling system. The telescope has cryo cooler for this purpose, which alone costs $150 million. Vibrations are also needed to be eliminated, for which thermoacoustic cooling, a pulse tube cryo cooler, is used. The explanation of which feels like coming out of a sci fi novel, resultant of which makes the infrared telescope cooler, vibrationless. Coming to the beryllium plated golden mirrors which is made up of 18 hexagonal segments 6.5 meter diameter each. The choice of material and its importance are quite large. Beryllium being stiffer non-deformable lightweight 
was used and gold as a reflective material was used as it is an excellent reflector of infrared light and being unreactive so it won't lose its shine the telescope is going to look at the dimmest lights in the space a few nanojansky to be exact and to explain nanojansky is the unit of brightness with this big mirror as well the telescope will only collect one photon per second which is extremely less and it is seen a minimum of 6 meter diameter mirror is required for this purpose other than these there are 16 inches around the telescope for maneuvering which are only fed by hydrazine monopropellant which when passed over a catalyst makes a highly exothermic reaction this limited amount of fuel has solely made the life cycle of the telescope to 10 years Currently, NASA is developing technology to refuel this system. Robot refueling spacecraft is a fascinating thing, and we can move beyond the early stages of universe through this mission. As the first image from James Webb Space Telescope now pop up in the internet, we hope someday to see telescopes being built, tested, and tracked in space, moving from one milestone to other.